So it's time to try some actual exam style questions now. So these will take a little bit more thought. Uh, please obviously use your notes uh, to help you um, as you get into the, the style of a um, little bit of more problem solving as well. So there'll be two questions coming up. They're both quite chunky. Uh, so uh, obviously you may need to pause, um, take a picture on your, your phone just so you can see them uh, to take your time before the answers start appearing. Um, or of course you can download uh, this worksheet uh, by going to the uh, website and uh, you'll be able to download this uh, along with the uh, answers uh, which will be helpful for your revision. So let's say these are exam old exam questions so the first one we have is here that's question one for you. Uh, question two is in two parts um, so uh, we uh, give you a little bit of time to do that as well. And you can also see the number of marks available for each part. So we now have the questions coming up. So if you uh, would like some more time, if you just pause now um, to make sure you've tried to try and do as much as you can as possible, if, if that would be good. Right, thanks very much. So let's go for question one. So we've got some skeletal formula there, six alcohols. And we need to figure out which are structural isomers of each other. So if you have a look, uh, you will see it's actually E and H for that. Uh, if you have a quick check of E, which is here, and of H, which is here, you can see they have the uh, same molecular formula, but a different structure. So carrying on, uh, we now need to uh, have a look at uh, which one is a tertiary alcohol. Uh, well, tertiary alcohols uh, do, of course, have the OH hydroxy group uh, bonded to a carbon which is then bonded to three other carbons um, and so we are looking at that being uh, H here from uh, that one so again the answer is going to be H and then which can be oxidized uh, to a carboxylic acid that has to be a primary alcohol um, so for a primary alcohol the oxygen the OH group is bonded to a carbon which is only bonded to one other carbon or a hydrogen and of course, that is going to be F there. Okay, so what is the molecular formula of G? Well, if you count up uh, the atoms, you will end up C4H8O2. Uh, don't forget, you do need to collate uh, all the um, atoms together. So you can't have had uh, C4H7OOH um, or anything like that. They've all got to be together. And uh, what's a homologous series? Uh, oh, so I missed one out there. What's the name of alcohol C? So alcohol C is 2-methyl pentanthriol. So if we just do that, so we get the pentol uh, because we've got a one uh, here, one, two, three, four, five carbons. Coming off uh, this carbon, number two is a methyl group, and then we have the third carbon, a OH group. And uh, then finally, uh, that's the definition of a homologous series. Moving on to question two then, what's a suitable catalyst for an elimination reaction? Um, and it's going to be an acid catalyst and the most common one used is concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, we need to then construct that equation so we are going from our alcohol to an alkene plus H2O. Uh, and it does again state a molecular formula for that. What is meant by the terms structural isomer and stereoisomers? So you've got your two definitions there. Structural, of course, have the same molecular formula but different structure formula. Stereo have the same structure, so structural formula but different arrangement in space. Draw the structures of stereoisomers A and B. Uh, so those are B and also of C. Um, so we've obviously eliminated the uh, uh, water from uh, pentan 2 -O. So if we go back to how it would have looked before that uh, elimination, um, so in this first uh, one, we have removed the um, uh, uh, this OH and H to give us our double bond there. Um, and again, we removed that OH and H to give us a double bond there. And of course, A and B are our EZ isomers. And uh, for C, we've removed the OH from there, but the H from carbon number one. Uh, which gives us the double bond between uh, 1 and 2 on the chain. And so what feature uh, allows um, uh, A and B to show 
stereoisomerism, where you need, of course, your double bond, uh, which does not allow a free rotation um, about it. And also A and B have different uh, groups on each of the carbon atoms. So if we look at that carbon atom there, it's got an H and a methyl group. Um, and on that carbon atom, it's got an H and an ethyl group. So both these, that one and that one, have different groups. Um, if we now look at this one, if we now consider stereoisomer B, um, we have got on this carbon here a hydrogen and a methyl group, and on this carbon here a hydrogen and ethyl group. So again, different groups on each of the carbons. Um, but for stereoisomer C, this carbon has just got hydrogens attached to it, so it doesn't make any difference um, if we were to change the position of those two. So finally, question two, uh, which is talking about pentan-2-ol being oxidized. Um, so pentan-2-ol um, is, of course, a, a secondary alcohol. It wants us to use skeletal formula for this. Um, so if it's a secondary, it can only go to a ketone, which means we add one square bracket O to represent the oxidi oxidizing agent, and we produce water. Um, pentan-1-ol, however, can be oxidized uh, to two different products. Um, those two different products will of course be an aldehyde and um, if we distill the product off, um, but if we reflux it will go to the uh, carboxylic acid. So our two products will be pentanal and uh, pentanoic acid. Um, and the reagents of course acidified uh, Cr2, O7, 2 minus. So hopefully those little uh, questions will help to get you into the swing of doing more complicated questions on alcohols. Um, obviously a lot of them involve uh, different functional groups, uh, but those two are quite nice because they just really looked at the alcohols topic.